The Ford F-150 and the Chevy Silverado have been the two best-selling full-size trucks in America for years. And today we've got the 2018 Ford F-150 Platinum and 2019 Chevrolet Silverado High Country, both priced at $67,000. I was able to spend a week with each of these trucks and do full reviews on those if you want to see those. So I don't have these at the same time as a side-by-side -side comparison, but we're going to go through some of the features on the outside, the inside, cargo bed, all that good stuff. Starting on the exterior of the Ford F-150, we've got their LED daytime running lights that wrap around the headlights. They are quite bright, they look pretty nice. And then the quad beam LED headlights, LED fog lights, and a satin aluminum grille with body color bumpers and chrome tow hooks. The High Country Silverado also gives you LED daytime running lights that have a unique shape to them, kind of around the headlight again, not the headlight housing, LED headlights, LED fog lights, and recovery hooks on the bottom. The design of the F-150 is more traditional and it's not brand new for this year. The 2019 Silverado is brand new for this year and it has a more aggressive stance to it. Uh, it's very controversial to some people. I would love to know which vehicle you guys think looks better. Our F-150 tester will give us 20 inch polished wheels, 275, 55 series, all terrain tires. Our mirrors have a spotlight, approach light, their power folding and automatic dimming on the driver's side. We also get power running boards that will kind of fold out rather than slide out when you open the door and then they'll fold back up when you close the door. Very convenient. 9.4 inches of ground clearance with this 4x4 model. Running around to the back we've got LED taillights, a power tailgate, platinum across the tailgate as well with a single exhaust outlet. Right here I just press the button on the key fob to open up the tailgate. And then it does give us a tailgate step. It's a little bit more cumbersome than the Silverado, but it does also give you a lower step and a handle to get up into the bed of the truck. You'll notice now that the 2019 Silverado has round wheel wells as compared to more squared off wheel wells like they did in the past. Our tester has 22 inch wheels with all season tires, retractable running boards that actually can go all the way back to the bed by the tick of a button on the back of it, or you can push a button on the inside of the vehicle as well. Our mirrors are power folding, auto dimming on the driver's side. They do give us the perimeter and puddle lighting as well. The rear has a locking differential, 8.1 inches of ground clearance, LED tail lights in the back, and a dual exhaust outlet. And the, the back of the Silverado gives us a step in the bumper, which is bigger than the previous generation. It seems to be a bit higher than the F 150's step. And the handle is sort of the area in the back of the bed that you can use to grab onto. As far as driver assist features go, for the F-150 Platinum that we have here, we have stop and go radar cruise control, active park assist to help you parallel park, lane keep assist, blind spot with trailer coverage and rear cross traffic alert, a reverse sensing radar system, rain sensing wipers, automatic high beams, pre-collision with pedestrian detection, and curve control which will actually help you brake during a curve if needed. Our 2019 Silverado tester gives us both front and rear park assist, lane change alert with side blind zone alert with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision alert and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, automatic high beams, lane keep assist system with departure warning, automatic high beams, safety alert seat for your back seat and teen driver technology. So a couple of the big differences here is our Ford tester did not have front parking sensors, but it does give you a curve control and the uh, active park assist and the Silverado does not have the radar cruise control but it gives you teen driver tech and your safety alert seat for the back seat just as a couple of examples. Our F-150 Platinum gives us the short box just like the Silverado does. We've got upper tie downs, lower tie downs. Uh, the upper tie downs, there's two on each side as you can see right there. We have LED box lighting as well, LED lighting up at the cab. A nice bed liner in here, 52.8 cubic feet with this short box, which is technically a little bit smaller than the Silverado. Chevrolet claims to have the largest box out of all full-size trucks. We still have LED lighting in here as well. There are 12 fixed tie downs, no movable tie downs in our tester. And we have an optional 120 volt power outlet in here as well. Both of our testers will give us intelligent access or smart access to where all you have to do is go up to the door, either push a button or slide your hand behind it in order to gain access. Both have remote start and push button start with the ability to open the tailgate as well. Hopping into the front seat of the F-150 test, we've got leather, 10-way power, 
heated, ventilated, and memory seats. They're technically multi-contour seats, so they do kind of give you a massaging function on the seat bottom cushion and the lower lumbar cushion up to the mid back. They were very comfortable. I was really happy with them throughout my time with the vehicle. The front seat of our Silverado gives us two-tone leather, which is 10-way power with lumbar support. They're heated and ventilated with the memory settings as well, just like the F-150. These seats seem to be a little bit more firm compared to the F-150 seats, but I was still relatively comfortable in here as well with no complaints overall. The F-150 has a pretty simple layout on the inside. Everything is laid out fairly well for good ergonomics. On the door, we do have nice soft materials, a good soft armrest, some areas for some cubbies and storage. We have a heated leather wrapped steering wheel, even power pedals below that. Our information display is eight inches and there's a ton of information that you can see. On your main screen, you can see a lot of information um, for various different things that you set it to. And you can scroll through a whole bunch of other stuff and then you have your regular gauges on each side of that as well. Moving over above the screen, we have a storage bin, which is nice with a nice lining so things don't slide around. We have the Sync 3 system as well, which is an 8-inch touchscreen. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are on there, plus Wi-Fi and a 10-speaker um, upgraded sound system. We also have the 360 camera as part of a package on this tester. The 360 camera, it is nice to have, but it is not as impressive as some other systems. For example, the Silverado gives you uh, several more options of viewing the sides of the vehicle, etc., things like that. The F-150 also gives us four-wheel drive controls with an automatic four-wheel drive, trailer brake controller, and the trailer backup control as well. The F-150 also gives us dual zone climate control, wireless charging with a nice storage bin, a couple USB ports below that, a regular shifter, a couple cup holders, and a slim storage area. We do have a large center console as well that is soft on top, tons of space inside with a sliding tray. There's even a little storage bin on the dash, an actual uh, 110 volt power outlet on the dash as well. No moonroof or sunroof in our model. A twin panel roof is available, however. We also have ambient lighting at night, garage controls, and automatic dimming rearview mirror. Chevrolet's design for the 2019 Silverado is very similar to the outgoing model. They said they were going for function and ergonomics. We do still have a column shifter, but we do have push button start just like the F-150, a heated leather wheel just like the F-150. This Silverado also has a large head up display. Our information display is eight inches, just like the F-150 again, but the information layout is different. As you can see, there's uh, maybe more individual uh, selection here versus you can see some groups on the F-150. Moving across, we do have an 8-inch touchscreen, and our speaker system is the Bose 7-speaker system. We have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Wi-Fi, Sirius XM, just like the F-150 as well. Our Silverado, however, has their surround vision camera, which gives you a ton of different angles that is that can be very helpful, probably more than the F-150 gives you. The Silverado also gives us an automatic four-wheel drive control. Those are to the left of the steering wheel and even a drive mode button with a sport mode technically, which is rare for a pickup. Silverado also gives us dual zone climate control, a couple USB ports, wireless charging again, just like the F-150. There's definitely a lot of similarities here. Uh, we have an automatic dimming rearview mirror, but we also have a rear camera mirror as well, which is fairly nice. You can uh, see behind you without any obstructions thanks to a camera on the back of the cab and you can even customize and adjust that as well. The Silverado also gives us a couple cup holders, a nice large storage area in the center console and soft top lining. Good storage in the door as well with soft materials just like the F-150. It doesn't have a visible dash storage shelf like the F-150 but it has two glove boxes so similar storage settings right there. The Silverado does give us a sunroof. There's no panoramic option available. The F-150 that we had didn't have one, but it offers a panoramic roof, so it depends what you're looking for. Both interiors are pretty similar in terms of materials, in terms of layout, cup holders, plugins, storage, all of that. You decide which one you like better. Previously, the F-150 was the leader of backseat space compared to the Silverado, but now they're almost identical. 
Both have fairly comfortable back seats. Neither of them recline or anything special. They have folding armrest, power ports, AC vents, heated rear seats, mat pockets, folding seats to allow a flat cargo floor. Both back seats are very, very similar. This is where the comparison gets very different. We have the three liter power stroke diesel in our F-150 with 250 horsepower, 440 pound feet of torque paired with a 10 speed automatic transmission getting from 20 miles per gallon in the city to 25 on the highway. The Silverado will offer a three liter diesel just like the F-150, but this tester had the 6.2 liter V8 with 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque. Again, paired with the same 10 speed automatic transmission Mile per gallon on this tester was 16 in the city and 20 on the highway. For comparison's sake, most people are going to have the 3.5 liter EcoBoost for the Ford that will give you 375 pound feet of, or excuse me, 375 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. When it comes to towing with this diesel, as equipped with our 4x4 model, it's 10,700 pounds. The two wheel drive will be 11,400 pounds in payload capacity. For the diesel, it will be 1,940 pounds, but as equipped on the spec sheet from Ford, it says 1,392 pounds, which actually surprises me quite a bit. It really depends on the engine, on the axle ratio, so I'll put a chart up for you guys so you can see that with all the different engines. As far as the Silverado, towing as equipped is 9,300 pounds. 12,200 pound max payload as equipped is 1,610 pounds and the max payload there is 2,240 pounds. During the weeks that I had each of these vehicles starting in the F-150, of course I took them for test drives, but I didn't have them together at the same time and I wasn't sure if I was gonna even be able to do a comparison of the two. So I didn't talk about each one in separate videos, but if you do want to see the full drive impression and review of each vehicle, I will have a link down below in the comments, description, and a card up above that little eye that you can click on. But quick impressions here with this F-150, I found that it was actually pretty smooth. My first impression was that this thing drove pretty smooth and I hadn't driven the 3 liter diesel before and I was impressed with it. It seemed to have some pretty decent pickup. Some good low end torque. I didn't tow with it or anything like that, but I was able to take this on just a dirt gravel road with some, some ruts and some washboards and it seemed to do just fine. There were no rattles or anything like that. One complaint was that the handling was not, not as good as I was expecting. Obviously it's a truck and it's not supposed to handle real great. The steering was a little bit heavy at low speeds, which got it to be a little bit annoying, but this ride was fairly soft, softer than the Silverado's ride actually, which was the contrary of what I was expecting going into the drive of each vehicle. But in conclusion with this F-150, it was very comfortable. I really enjoyed my time with it. Uh, I can definitely see why it's the best selling truck in America and why it's held that crown for quite some time. Now let's take a look at the Silverado's drive. For the Silverado, I actually drove this and the Sierra Denali. Both had the same 6.2 liter V8, but there was one big difference that I could tell between the two of them, which was the adaptive ride, ride control, which the Silverado does not have, the Denali does, and it made a serious difference on the way that it handled around corners and how it felt just on everyday driving with some bumps. Now, compared to the F-150, the Silverado seemed to handle better. I thought it was a better handling vehicle, but the ride did not seem to compete. I think the ride from the Denali was just as good as the F-150 with its adaptive suspension, but overall the F-150 had a more comfortable ride compared to the Silverado. My impression of the Silverado was that it was still pretty smooth. The 10-speed transmissions in both of these trucks seemed to be very excellent. I didn't have any trouble, any hesitation, or really any kind of things like that. Braking was good on both vehicles. I think the braking on the Silverado was better. I don't know exact track times or anything like that, but road noise was almost identical. I took decibel ratings and it was seriously less than a decibel, about half a decibel apart, and maybe even less than that. It was almost identical. Um, in conclusion, I think the Silverado drove pretty well. The V8 has plenty of power. Obviously, it's much different than that three liter diesel, and it's gonna be a different feel compared to what the turbo is going to be with EcoBoost engines and engines as well. I didn't have any rattles in either truck. Both felt very solid. So there you guys have it. A quick little comparison of the Ford F-150 and the new Chevy Silverado. Both priced at $67,000. Obviously not perfectly competing with their powertrains being different, but like you saw, they have so many different features that are 
pretty much the exact same. I mean, they both offer a lot of the same things. Towing and payload is very similar. The F-150 is the king with towing and payload, as you can see. But which one would you guys go for? Leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. There's a ton of information on these trucks. I wasn't able to go over everything. Leave your comments below. I appreciate you guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and we'll catch you next time.